Good afternoon, folks. Scott Watts here at Wattsway Farms. Thanks for tuning in on this beautiful day. In today's video, we're gonna go through the assembly and probably the initial usage of my new Osborne 45 bushel bulk pig feeder uh, with lid since it's gonna be used outdoors. Um, I purchased this from gentleman by the name of Rob Moore at Barn World. I'll probably put a link to their site in the description. I can't say a whole lot about them. Don't have no a whole lot of ex, don't have a whole lot of experience. This first thing I've purchased from them, but what I can say, my initial impression is, this is a company I'll do business with again. Um, you know, I paid full retail, and I, so I'm not you know getting any sort of compensation to say this or anything like that. So there's no sponsorship. But Rob has been a pleasure to work with. He's very responsive to emails. He definitely seems like a guy that goes above and beyond for his customers so if you're in the market for something like this or something else that they sell you probably can't go wrong uh dealing with them so anyway so let's do a walkthrough of the parts and we'll begin the assembly the assembly the purpose of this is kind of a review if you will of none of the overall product yet that will be coming probably in another video but kind of like I did with my Prefert squeeze chute, or at least the wheel kit that needed to be assembly, is just a test to see if the instructions are easy, hard, a lay guy with me with not a whole lot of, you know, I guess mechanical farm related type skills, how hard it is for me to put it together and put it into use. Because my thought is if I can do it and it's not too hard, then anybody ought to be able to do it. So let's get started. I know a lot of review type videos begin with a kind of what's in the box uh, unboxing, if you will. Well, obviously this is didn't come in a box. It came on a pallet. So let's start with a what's in the pallet uh, type scenario. So kind of self-explanatory. So you've got this pretty heavy fiberglass base and that's going to go on the ground. You've got the, I guess the main if you call it the hopper or whatever that's going to sit um on top of that but actually i guess it'll sit on top of this this is the wire i guess the steel heavy duty that's some pretty heavy duty galvanized uh steel there that will sit on the base that's where the pigs will go in and stick their heads in to get the feed and then this kind of upside down cone will sit in there You've got this as the little pallet thing versus a traditional gravity feeder. The pigs are actually going to have to push these, pal these paddles with their nose that will then spin this little thing that will cause the feed to come out. So you've got, this is just, I guess, the center rail. Um, this metal behind here will go on top of that to make it 45 bushels. You can actually... For about a hundred bucks, add several more of those and keep stacking it up just to make this a pretty large um, feeder. But since I will still be slinging bags by hand to fill this up, I don't want to go any higher. As you'll see when it's put together, it's going to be probably chest high for me. So there's the lid. I'm going to come back to that in a second. Uh, and then you've got these are the, I guess, the brackets for the lid and so that you don't have to pull it all the way off. It looks like it from the instructions. I did a quick read through. It looks like it kind of will raise up and hold to the side. You've got a handle and even a, they even sent me a sticker for the outside logo. Um, some instructions that we'll kind of go through. A template on, I guess, some cutting that I'm going to have to do. I hope I've got the right size bits and then couple of bags of metal parts, rings, more stickers. I think this is the sticker for the wheel to turn the cone up and down. Uh, I didn't mention that. So here's the cone that goes inside of there, sits on top of that. And basically what happens, this will, with that handle, you raise it up and down and it'll control the amount of food. Now on this lid, you can see it and I'll, and post the pictures of what it looked like when it got here this it was banged up pretty good when i got here and i honestly don't believe it was rob at barn world's fault i actually think it was probably an honest mistake by the shipping company um that dinged it up but 
I took a couple pictures, the pictures that you're seeing, and sent them to Rob, and literally within an hour, if that long, he had already given me multiple email responses saying that they are shipping a new lid out to me on Monday. And again, I just couldn't be more pleased with that level of customer service. You just don't see that very often uh, from anywhere anymore. So the fact that they, you know, immediately responded, said they were shipping it out. He apologized though. It clearly wasn't his fault. Uh, again, I think it was an honest mistake made by the shipping company, but the fact that they're so quick to stand by and send me a new one, um, just, I don't know, speaks volume. So, yeah. So again, I guess if he, if he had said no, I probably would have used it anyway. Uh, again, it was dinged up a lot worse. You saw in the pictures, but I tried to kind of press it back out as best I could. So, all right, well, that's all the parts. Uh, now I do, and it's not here on the ground. It's still on my trailer, but I do have a four by four and sheet of plywood for the skid, which is not part of the instructions, but I'm going to uh, start building this. And then when I get to the spot where it makes sense, where it's not too heavy, I will stop and put the skid together. So the center piece is in, I actually had to drill the holes in it, which was, I guess, no big deal. And then just put a washer on and then that sets on top. That's what the pigs will push on to make the food come out. The instructions call this the trough separator cage. Had to drill a bunch of holes through it. The instructions actually say, or I'll recommend using a masonry bit saying that a normal bit dulls pretty quick in drilling through this fiberglass, but I didn't have any, I don't have a masonry bit that size and I didn't want to have to run to town because I was ready to get this together. So I want what I got. Now the next part of the instructions moves on to this piece, but I'm going to wait and switch over and go ahead and build the skids because this thing gets pretty heavy pretty quick. Now I thought I was going to have to drill holes and screw this thing to the actual skids. I was going to, you know, use four by four and a piece of plywood uh, for the skids, but it comes with this right here. Uh, and that's for when you attach it to there galvanized skid which i didn't buy that skid doesn't really hold it off the ground and you can't really get underneath it with a forklift it's more for just i guess towing and i wanted one that kind of held it up a little bit and could move it so versus drilling holes i found these nice half inch by 10 inch uh, bolts at tractor supply and these little carriage bowls that'll line up with that just perfectly and go through so next step is build the skids the entire skid is going to be built out of half of a sheet of half inch pressure treated plywood and one eight foot pressure treated four by four i'm going to cut that in half at an angle 45 cut angle cuts there 45 cuts there to get two skids and then i'm gonna cut the corners off of each one of those to round it up screw it together and then attach it to that here's the bottom side of my skid i'm mainly showing you the bottom to show that in addition to drilling the hole i kind of drove uh, for this long bolt that's going to go in there I drilled a one and a half inch hole for the washer and the nut so they kind of be flush with the bottom. I don't care if it sticks down a little bit, but that way I get, you know, it's a little bit better grip uh, on the bolt because I didn't buy these any longer than they needed to be. And the way this is going to work is the carriage bolts will go through this that's already in the, the cage and then lock in and lock into that. The skid is now attached. I think that actually 
turned out pretty good. It's definitely going to be needed because this bad boy is heavy. The skid wasn't part of the instructions. I kind of made that up as I went. It's basically a 10 foot four by four cut in half at 45 degree angles. A sheet of, it's probably about half inch plywood that's all pressure treated. A 10 inch uh, carriage bolt and then washers and bolts and lock screws and some drills and it all went together. So now we go back to the regular instructions and proceed finish putting this thing together. Next you put the main, I guess, fiberglass hopper. If you'll cut that on and then this little piece goes in the middle and you have two little screws here and here that attach to I guess the paddles on the bottom so that when the pigs push the paddle to get food I guess that stirs it and forces it uh, down into the, the pot at the bottom. This cone goes in here next and that little white thing at the top of it is going to sit in that little piece and then it also the instructions called for putting that little bolt in to act as some sort of stop measure for the cone so that it can operate with minimum clearance but i guess what this will do is is the handle that'll come through here you'll be able to raise and lower that cone to control the amount of feed um, that goes down into the bottom of it all right, so this is what it looks like with the cone in there. For those of you watching this that may be considering getting one of these, I probably, even though the instruction said, put this little sleeve in here first. It really made it a challenge to get this cone on. There was really no reason to put that on first. It would have made just as much sense to go ahead and put the cone on and then put that little thing in there because I ended up having to get a hammer and pound on it a bit to get it in because that overhangs just uh, this little thing right here overhangs just enough to catch the other end of that little pipe so anyway so now next thing is you got to put four of these on which is going to require more drilling I'm not going to film that but this will basically go on here and connect the hopper to the uh the little feed trough cage okay for this next part we basically put the metal hopper sends together but it says right here you gotta cut a hole in it and it gives you kind of this template to use and then one pattern if you're using a hole saw and another pattern if you're using metal shears and i'll be using these 10 snips to get this part to work versus trying to do all this fancy measuring. I just cut the template, put holes in it, attached it with temporarily with a couple of screws, and now I just take my 10 snips and I'll cut this square out. I've kind of jumped ahead a little bit in my assembly from kind of doing a step-by-step. -step. I've got the, I guess the metal hopper extension on all the way around and I went ahead and put these lids this lid support on and the fancy uh, sticker that they that the friends at Osborne sent me so a couple things to note so you had to drill cut the hole and that like I did in my 10 snips and then they actually said the instructions were wrong they said line this this sheet of metal this piece of metal here steel had two holes in it. They said, line it up with the holes, but there was no way these, these holes were too far apart. There was no way template or not, it was gonna line up all the way around. So I lined it up with the one hole and then had to drill the next hole. And then you literally had to drill every one of these. And the key is it was a two person job to get this thing on here and set just right. So my wife helped me and we got it sitting on there. And then what you do is you just come through and you, 
you kind of do this one and then you go around the back side and do one and you kind of go at an angle and you adjust it. And then once you get it set, you go put them all in. And then on this little stitch piece here together, again, not as easy as it looks. And see in some of these screws, you really had to push it and bend it to <clears throat> get it to fit in. See that one still, even though that screw's already pretty tight, see it's still got a bit of an angle. So, you know, it is a pig feeder, so I guess you gotta accept a certain amount of doesn't have to be perfect, but it's also a $1,500 feeder. So I expect, you know, $1,500 worth of value out of this. I can't say that, uh, you know, it's a bad thing. I'm not disappointed, upset or any of that. It just, it was uh, putting this part together was probably a little more challenging uh, than I would have expected. And then Osborne was nice enough to include this nice sticker of their label to put on there, which started not to do it, but I did. But notice the red writing on it. I mean, it was like that when I got it. It had a, so it had a sticky back and then you put this on and then you peeled the front off and it almost looked like somebody had, this was maybe one they had gotten and used to edit and they had pulled it off and looks like they wrote the word green here maybe. Maybe this is the wrong color green or something. I don't know. And I drew the arrow and then they drew this this was actually this up and down red line, I think was on the outside. And you can kind of see even more traces where they wrote on the, the back side. Whatever marker they used, though, bled through. So if you're watching this, Rob, my good buddy at Barn World, and you want to send me another one, uh, I'll be happy to put it on top of this one to cover that up. So uh, a couple other things. So this is now hooked up it's kind of got this little lever piece here it's hard to film this at the same time so that you you lift that up and then you can raise and lower the hopper uh, to where you want it so it controls the feed and then when you get it where you want this little latch here flips over and it locks it in and then this Actually, there's no way for this to screw on. And I was like, well, I'm going to lose this pretty quick, I think, because there's nothing attached. But they actually, on the on this lid mount, they give you a spot, um, I guess, to store this when it's not in use. Of course, that means that it may be sitting down into your feed, but I guess it keeps it there. Now, this is for the lid. So the next step would be, the little attached to here and then so that when you lift it up it uh, kind of lays off to the side uh, so that you don't have to set it all the way off and I guess I'm gonna have to wait a few days to finish this assembly because my good friend Rob or who I now call him my good friend Rob has uh, is sending me a new one of these because this we've got all dinged up there and um shipping so he said it went out today's wednesday i think it was monday or tuesday that it went out so i guess it'll be a couple days so i reckon we will finish this assembly then this video is going to go in a little bit out of order now i still haven't finished the assembly i've got to put the lid together and that's really all that's it but since they're sending me a new lid, I don't want to put it together and then have to take it apart to put the new lid on. I don't think, they've already said the uh, barn world, Robert barn world already said he doesn't want the lid back, but the, he can't speak for the shipper since it was there that damaged it. So I'm supposed to keep it available, but I want to go ahead and start using it. So the instructions say you've got to, I guess, teach them both how to use it and figure out how high that cone on the inside needs to be. So basically this little sticker it gave you for the front, it said lower the cone to where it's just barely resting above those little cross members on the inside and then put the sticker, line that up notch with number one. And then it says to get started, you roll it up to number four Put in just enough feed to cover the cone, 
spin that around two times and then wait and watch. They say that the, you want it to where there's enough feed that covers the bottom at all times, but I guess doesn't pile up too much and then you raise it or lower it accordingly. So let's do that. Okay, so now we have about 800, I mean, not sorry, eight bags, which is 400 pounds of food in there. It covers up the cone. A very little bit falls through, which is kind of interesting. The pigs already see that, and so they're going at it. So now, actually, let me put the lid on, and then we'll give it the spin, like the instructions say. So now then we... Spin this thing. Until it covers the bottom. Which is, I guess, I don't know. Let's go with that and see how it looks. I'm going to, oh, Give it a day and then we'll check back together and see how it looks tomorrow. My new undamaged lid arrived today. So I am going to finish this build and show you a little bit of footage of how the pig feeder's been working. It's actually been in there for a couple days and wrap this thing up. First step in this final assembly is to put these three pieces on. So you've got this. Let me give it a second so you can see a little better. So this hook here is so that when you lift up the lid to refill it, that'll kind of catch on the side of the hopper so that it doesn't fall all the way down. It tells you just to put on one of these brackets and that's what's going to go on that hinge i'll show you in just a second and then this i'm going to have to drill a hole and this will be the kind of latch to hold it down the lid is basically on now and i've got the hinge with attached i put that other bracket on and you can see how the i guess the lid stop works the only last piece to do is i've got a this is going to require some drilling but this is going to come down and then Somewhere in here, I drill a hole in this for that latch to go over. So and then we should be done. Okay, so I thought I was going to finish this video this afternoon, but now that I'm at the very last step, I don't think I'm going to. And let me show you why. So everything works as it should. This, let's see if I can do this while I'm holding the camera. The lid raises up catches there's it should so i can still fill it and empty it but then when you close it uh, what's happening is and watch that up there it's catching right there so see it's not sitting all the way down and let me raise it back up for you and i'll show you why So right here where this uh, support piece is, you've got this square headed screw uh, bolt and the same thing here and on the other side. And the challenge of that is it's supposed to have been not that bolt. It was supposed to be one of these with the flat head. Now there's a chance somewhere in the hundreds of these that I used there's because all of these are the little shorter ones that I maybe had a few more of these I guess one inchers and I used them in the wrong place or perhaps they were shorted but I had these in my shop I didn't have any more of these so I used these instead thinking they would be okay but now that I'm at the last spot I know that they're not so I've got this one now I'm gonna go to tractor supply this evening or tomorrow and see if I can't find the two more of these and finish this thing. But in the meantime, it's still, I guess, functional. And 
latch goes down and closes. It just doesn't latch shut. You know, I'm not terribly concerned with uh, at this stage. I do think that maybe some blowing wind or something might, or blowing rain, could get a little bit in here, these holes that are exposed, but um, I'm not, you know, I don't think it's gonna overly mess it up, but we spend 1500 bucks on something, you might as well do it right. So the pig feeder is officially complete and in operation. As you can see, these guys don't have any problem with it. Uh, now, using it, now I did adjust this up to a six. I felt like maybe it wasn't putting quite enough feed down in the bottom. The instructions said there should be a thin cover on the bottom, but I'm already liking what I see versus the gravity feeder where they can get their whole nose in there and start slinging it all over the place, which creates a lot of waste. With this, you can see they're basically getting just enough to eat off of it and eat off the bottom. And then as the little thing spins around, it gives them some more. So let me show you a couple other minor adjustments that I made. Now I did go back, tractor supply didn't have the exact pan head, pan head screw that I wanted. So I went with this and a washer. You know, I've got this little handle on here now. And let me show you another small change that I made. Right here, it had these two, these are just the same pan head screws like you see everywhere else with these little hex nuts behind it. It had this flipped over initially, but what's happening was this lid still wasn't closing down because that was catching on the lip. So I probably could have put this down just a little bit more but uh, it still works. And truthfully, I'm not overly worried about that thing coming off. But, um, but anyway, but there you have it. The Osborne 45 bushel bulk feeder. It says this thing can handle up to 90 uh, mm -hmm. hogs, but you know, it'd be an awfully crowded. These 10 that are on here now seem to be, you know, fitting okay, but I could imagine uh, it getting pretty crowded pretty quick. So, if you like this video, uh, give me a thumbs up, give me a like. Uh, if you're looking for a feeder like this, again, I can't recommend Rob over at Barn World enough. I mean, his customer service uh, and responsiveness, I've never met the guy face-to-face, -face, only via email, but his, um, again, he's just, he off the chart good. Uh, highly recommend if you're looking for one of these to give him a shout and see what deal he can make you. So hope you enjoyed this video. Look forward to seeing you back here again soon.